Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Saman. Uh, so in the last videos, we talked about variables, we talked about if statements, and we talked about loops. Um, so we're now ready to kick it up even a notch higher and talk about methods. A method is a block of code, or otherwise known as multiple lines of code, that all run only when that block of code is called. You use these methods to perform certain actions, and depending on the method, you can pass different parameters, which are the variables that we talked about in the previous section, into these methods to perform slightly different things depending on the parameters that are entered in. So why would you use methods? They're great for reusing code. You define the code once, and you can call that same piece of code many times without needing to rewrite it. So the way that you create a method is that you need a method name. You have the option to pass parameters into that method, and I'll talk about what those are. Again, you use the squiggly braces to set the scope of that method, and then you have the lines of code, or the actions, or anything else that, any other line of code that um, would need to execute when this method is called. So this method is, um, this part of the method is called the method name, this part of the method is called the method body, and together it comes as one as your method. So methods have a couple key characteristics other than that that you need to create every time. The first one is the access modifier. Um, so there's a couple different ones. There is public, there is private, and there is global. Global. Um, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to talk about it right now, but and it will make more sense when we talk about when we start um, getting into classes. But whenever we type private, that method belongs to a class, which means it can only be called from a class, if from the class that it got created in, I should say. Um, if we declare a method as public, what that means is any class can call it. So let's say I wanted this method to be responsible for calculating the sum of two numbers. So one, let's rename the method to something more meaningful, like calculate sum. And the action I want this method to take is to create a new integer called sum and set sum equal to x plus y. OK, well, now what do I do with sum? Well, I can't just hang on to it. I need to give it back to whoever called this method. And the way you do that is by using the return keyword and passing the variable that you want to return. So basically, over here, I'll have another method. And for this, I'll just call it driver. And driver will call calculate sum. And the way you call a method is a lot simpler because you don't need to write out any of the actual keywords. All you need to do is name, write out the name of the method, follow it with the parentheses, and add a semicolon. And so what this does is whenever line three executes, it basically goes and references line seven and it starts executing everything in line seven and it returns a value to line three. So in this case, we're expecting it to return x plus y, um, but we're not actually storing that anywhere. So what we can do is create another integer and we can name it sum because the last place we declared sum was inside the scope of line seven through 13. So if we wanted, we could reuse the variable sum here. So if the integer sum is equal to calculate sum, it will return that value to us. OK, well, if you're following along, you're asking Saman, well, what are values x and y? We never actually set these. Well, I mean, one thing that we could do is set integer x to 5 and integer y to 5. And that'll, in our previous examples, similar to those, it'll take x plus y, so it'll get 10, and it'll return 10. Um, but you're thinking that's not really very useful. I don't, maybe sometimes I want to pass in 6 or 7 or 8. I don't want to keep changing the values here. So what you can do is you can pass parameters into different methods. So a parameter is basically where you tell your method, hey, I want to pass in an integer every time I call you. So what that would look like on this end is I want to calculate the sum of 5 and 6. And our expectation would be that it would know to take 5, and it would know to add that to 6, and it would return the value to us 
and to sum. Okay, so now when I'm passing in these new values, I need to actually tell the method header that it needs to be expecting those values. So I will declare an integer x, and I'll create another integer called y. And because I've already declared x and y, I don't need to do it again here, but I still do need the integer sum. So ideally what happens is whatever value gets passed in as x, whatever value gets passed in as y, those values won't be empty, and they'll get added together to equal sum and stored in sum, and then that value will now get returned over here to line 3. And I really, really believe that this should execute. So we actually don't, for this purpose, need um, that method, that top one. I lied. So I'm not expecting this to execute because there is one thing that we forgot. And we forgot to tell Apex up front that, hey, this method is actually going to have a return type. Otherwise, if we didn't really have line number 9 and that didn't exist, what we would do is type in the word void. And there's no return type to be expected whenever this method gets called. We can return other variable types, like we can add string, boolean, double, object, which we'll learn about later. Basically, the world is your oyster there. So let's do a system debug sum. And let's see what it prints out. Hopefully 11. Cool. So although that was a pretty simple use case of a method, there's a lot of different things that you could do within here. Another thing we could have done to really help minimize the code is put that system debug in here as well. Um, so that way it doesn't need to get called from here. And what you could do is you actually don't even need to set that value. It could just return the value. You could just do nothing with it, especially since you move that debug here. So now what I can do is I can call that method multiple times and pass in different values each time. Definitely not H. And if I execute all of that, I can really easily, without re needing to write out this piece of code multiple times, I can just get the sum of all those different numbers. Pretty cool. Of course, you could do the same thing with another method to calculate sum. Call this one subtract numbers. Subtract x from y. And then instead of that method, call subtract number. And I want to subtract 90 from 90 minus 5. And that would return 85 to us there. And really, we could just keep going with this. So let's try to pair it with um, some of the concepts that we had learned before, uh, the if statement and the while loop. So let's make another method called private or not called private, but another method that's private. And it's going to return an integer, and we're just going to call it calculate. We're still going to want to pass in two variables, x and y. But let's say our business had a really crazy business rule they wanted us to implement, where uh, basically if x is greater than y, then subtract y from x. Otherwise, if x is less than y, then add y plus x. And they said, hey, we need this rule implemented now, and there's no way to do it with the Salesforce out-of-the-box functionality, so we got to write some Apex code to do it. So the way we could implement this is if x is greater than y, strictly greater than y, then subtract y from x. So sum would just be y minus x. Cool. Otherwise, this could, we could write else, but if we did write else, 
if these two numbers are the same, then that would execute. And there's nothing in here that specifically mentions else, or uh, excuse me, if these values are the same. So because of that, let's not write else. Instead, we'll just write else if if y is bigger than x, or alternatively, if x is less than y, we could write it this way as well. Now, if that's true, what they want to have us do is calculate sum by adding x plus y. And at this point, we forgot to declare and instantiate our variable integer sum. So I'll create sum and I'll just set sum equal to zero. And ideally, not ideally, but one of these two things will definitely happen. If I pass in uh, my values based on these requirements. Um, so if I pass in five and four, five is bigger than four. So it'll subtract four from five and I'll get negative one. And otherwise, if four was bigger than five, which it's not, this line will never execute, but if it was, then it would add the two values. All things are good. Let's return sum. And now we can call our method called calculate. And let's pass in 5 and 20. So what would happen? Is 5 greater than 20? No, so don't execute that. Is 20 greater than 5? Yes, it is. So take five and add 20 to it so we should get 25 returned and let's throw a system debug if what hasn't been clear already these definitely don't have to be named the same thing um, you can name this part whatever you want and let's see what happens and let's hope that we get 25. Oops. I forgot to hover over that last curly brace. Cool, and there's 25. 